Okay, I believe this is working. Hello everyone. Um, welcome to my chat about Bad Hotel. So uh, this is for my experimental sound games class at MICA, at the MICA Game Lab. Experimental sound games can mean a lot of things. And I thought it would be interesting to talk through a kind of experimental uh, sound video game that I worked on a number of years ago called Bad Hotel. So Bad Hotel was a uh, an iOS game. It was a mobile game originally. Um, it started out uh, exclusively on iOS. Um, and the idea was that it was, uh, well, and it was made by my, my company um, called Lucky Frame. So Lucky Frame was a super tiny micro indie studio based in Scotland. There were three of us, uh, Jonathan Brodsky and Sean McElroy and myself. And we had had this kind of, the, the basis of Lucky Frame had been to make interesting musical experiences that brought in games and in different types of interactions. Um, and we managed to get some funding to make a series of music games that were the core concept uniting all the games was that um, your gameplay was um, uh, through your actual gameplay it was it was it was generating music itself so rather than uh, you know music being uh, responding to you you were actually kind of making you could play the games in a way that you were where you were making decisions um, partially from a musical standpoint and partially from a game standpoint so that you could kind of combine those things together and with the kind of question of like what would that what would come out of that um, what if was basically the project that got this funding what if um, music and games were a little bit closer than they perhaps had been obviously there are many examples of music games um, and we were kind of trying to draw on a lot of those but try to especially at the time um, games like Guitar Hero and stuff were still really popular and that was kind of all that music games were about and we were kind of trying to think like what if we used game like engines and game like mechanics and game interactions to generate music what can that bring to music and what can music bring to the games um, so the first game we made with that uh, with the funding from Channel 4 and Creative Scotland was uh, was Pugs Love Beats, which was hilarious, uh, a good introduction to the genre. Um, and the second game we made was called Bad Hotel, so I'm gonna focus on Bad Hotel. Now, one of the things that's nice about um, showing this is that the audio engine was built entirely in pure data, in PD. So we've been using PD in my class at, in, uh, at MICA. Um, I know it's quite popular in lots of other universities and just people <laughs> in general because it's free and it's a graphical programming um, interface. Uh, so it's it's a great kind of very powerful but relatively accessible method for making complex musical interactions and, and sounds. Um, so that's what we used uh, in conjunction with this um, uh, amazing <laughs> cobbled together game engine uh, that Jonathan put together. Um, can tell the age of this game because we didn't use something like Unity. Uh, this was sort of in the before Unity and, and Unreal and those game types of fully finished package game engines really took over. So we kind of had cobbled together a game engine from open frameworks and a few other things and we used a package called libpd um, to bring PD into this project. Now I believe the PD is still going as far as I know and I'm pretty sure you can still use it with Unity so I haven't done that yet and recently but from what I understand you still can. So this should still be relevant um, but it's also fun because it means we can really dig into the sound engine and we can watch it make noise and watch how it all works very visually. So I'll start by introducing Bad Hotel a little bit. Bad Hotel um, the, the conceit behind Bad Hotel was that it was a tower defense game, but where you were actually building a tower. So it started as a sort of play on words, uh, because tower defense games usually don't involve building towers. They usually involve building castles or something like that. Um, and we thought, okay, building a tower. And um, we started um, experimenting a little bit with what that would mean from a music generation standpoint. And we hit very early on um, on this idea of it being a kind of a sequencer based on the structure that you're building. Um, I think this is the very first video we made. 
uh, showing how it worked. So you can kind of see sort of what's happening there, maybe. Um, you can see that there is this little purple block in the middle is the kind of the core hotel. It actually even said hotel on it. That was the first part we put into the game. Um, and there's this kind of a sequence that builds out from that core, um, uh, from that core uh, building. Um, whoops, that's a different game we made. <laughs> hey, that was a fun one. Um, so this, uh, this sequence kind of, you can see it in the flashing, and you can see these branches that build out. And with each pulse of that branch, uh, the rooms, as we call, started calling them, light up. Um, and there's a few different things going on there. So that was the kind of the core sort of uh, triggering system we started thinking about, a, a branching loop where they would start at the middle of the hotel and um, depending on how complex of a branching system you built on your hotel, um, the rhythms would uh, become accordingly complex. So the length of the loop would be the length of your longest branch. So in this case, it was there were one, two, three, four, five rooms added on top of the hotel. The hotel was worth two. So that means it was, I believe, that's in seven. Is that in seven? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no. oh, this is before the hotel was worth two. So I guess this is in six. Okay. So that's in six. Um, and then we started thinking, well, okay, great. So that means we've got a kind of a, a core concept for how to uh, build these branching musical systems. Now we can start having each room be different instruments. Um, and we can start. Uh, yeah, playing around and, and, and actions as well that they would take. Um, so this was the next version where we start actually started implementing. You can see the beat being built up there. And you can actually see an enemy coming in there. And you can see that the green room is a snare drum. The purple rooms are these synths. Now you can start to see immediately that um, the hotel is two beats and each uh, step of the branch is one beat. So now it's in five because there's a branch of three rooms attached to the hotel. And that's a different type of synth. The blue room is a different synth and also a different type of defensive um, weapon system. You can start also to see some of what the game uh, aspect of things was. Um, there's a money counter up here, so some of these rooms would make you money. Uh, there's a next wave, which actually isn't implemented in this version, I think, but that would be the waves of enemies coming at you. Um, some of these rooms would make you money, some of them wouldn't. Uh, other ones would have would shoot weapons, other ones would be uh, healing, would heal your rooms. So then it be, would become um, all, all the kind of standard tower defense style uh, game mechanics were implemented in there, right? So that we would have uh, enemies, health, uh, fixed resource, or limited resources that you were playing with, um, all that stuff uh, would be something that, you, that could be played with in the game. And on top of it, we started using this um, generative music system. Um, so this game's still available on Steam. You can get it. <laughs> uh, the, um, and you can play it. So. Why don't we uh, play a level? And I'll show you what it's like in the final version. Um, sure. Uh, I don't remember what these levels are. I made them a very long time ago. Um, so we kind of uh, ended up theming it in this sort of art deco-y, very bizarro vector art uh, style. Um, and the... Um, uh, the, the theme
theming, the storyline became this kind of weird anti-capitalist uh, Wu Tang Clan themed um, story about a hotel baron. It was really strange, uh, but we had fun with it. Um, so every level starts with this pulsing core hotel. There are different tempos that can be um, that each level can have, and each world has a different sound library and a set of other kind of um, characteristics. So a different scale for each. Um, uh, it, it, that's the most important one. It's a different scale for each world. Um, so the scale will actually change, and that will be applied across all sample playback, all synth playback, everything. So we have four rooms available to us. Uh, if I remember right, this two hundred dollar room is the room that gives us um, that makes us money. There are two different types of guns and a healing room. So as soon as I start building by dragging the rooms on here and, uh, and placing them onto the hotel, the music will start and the actual enemies will come in. So there's a kind of like, there's this link between the sound and the gameplay, uh, which is generated by the, the decisions from, from music. It's, it's, it's linked, the, 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 the decision to start playing then just creates music, which then creates the game. So it becomes this really cohesive, strong uh, thing. Um, so I'll put a couple of these rooms. Oh, I don't have any guns, so this guy's gonna kind of destroy me. Um, so you can see, as soon as I started building, um, the, uh, the sequence started being built out as well. Um, and the bigger the sequence I made, um, the, uh, m the longer the loop was. Now, there's a kind of underlying ambient sound happening here. Um, there is, and then each enemy has a different sound. Now you may notice as well um, that every time there's an explosion, the key changes. So every time I lose a room, um, then the the tonality will actually change. The chord the chord changes will actually change. Um, and on top of it, the closer I get, since I haven't been paying close attention, I'll probably lose this level. The closer I let I get to losing this level, the smaller my branches become, and so the loop becomes shorter. And so there becomes this like really strong link between um, the uh, the gameplay, the music that is generated, and the feeling of of like what the game is creating as well, like the the, the feeling that oh like I'm running out of time. Uh, this is getting a little bit more intense. The pitch is changing. The loop is getting shorter. Um, things are happening. You'll also notice each enemy has a different sound library that gets attached to it. So um, each time a bird comes on screen, a different sound is generated. The different firing of my weapons all sounds different. Um, so all of these things work together to build uh, a, the, the musical patterns. So let's see how long I last here. Mines are really good against those birds. Seagulls carrying bombs. Put a healer on as well. Oh, I won. Now, one thing I really liked about this game, I feel like this game is, I made this game long ago enough. Um, that I'm allowed to just like talk about what I like about it. Um, one thing I really liked is how it, it the, the beat once that you've made, if you win, if you beat the game, uh, then if you beat the level, then it keeps going throughout this whole stage and you can just chill out to it. I mean, it's it quite good, right? Quite simple, quite short, but there's like that nice little like gentle, delay on one of the rooms. 
the healing room is like still going, still healing up my rooms. With the dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a. It's done now. So now it's just adding that little Um Yeah. So it's a nice kind of reward to be left with the, the piece of music that you made. Um uh, let's play a level from, um, uh, one from a different level so you can see, uh, what happens. Now, <laughs> um, we're actually here. What's, what's, what we can do is, is jump straight into the, uh, the sound engine so you can start to see. So this is the sound engine. This is all of the sound for Bad Hotel was made in here. Um, so the first thing I wanted to show you is a good example of a kind of little quirk that's really great and easy to do in, in something like Pure Data, um, is, is to make little like what I kind of people talk about juice from a game design standpoint in terms of um, in terms of visual feedback a lot you know like screen shake and um, you know lovely flashes and and sort of uh, recoil and all that kind of stuff but I'd like to think of audio juice as a little subtler like audio juice in a game can be some like little little quirks that you maybe don't actually pick up you may have noticed that um, there's a nice little synth sound every time you press a button. Boom, um, right there. Uh, but you may not have noticed that that changes. Boom. Um, um, and so if the more you do it, the more you work out that actually it's a sequence. And if you click fast enough, you can actually start hearing the repetition of the sequence. So we do it here. So that's a sequence that's being played every time you tap the screen in the menu. And that's just like, it's, it's, it's randomized so that every time you open the game, that'll be a new sequence. Every time you relaunch uh, the world generator or the world selector, I think it's randomized. I can't remember exactly, but it's randomized, but but rep, but repetitious so that like if you if you you can actually play it, it's not just a random noise. It is a random sequence. So that means you can play it and actually you can start hearing the repetition. You can start hearing the things. Um, the, the melody that's in there. Your brain starts understanding it as a melody, um, which is quite a fun thing. And it's quite simple to implement in, in something like Pure Data. This is the whole thing. It's a little patch called NavClick. Um, and it's a great little example of what you can do when you're embedding something like this, uh, a generative musical system into a game. So I have f a receive object from OF. OF was our game engine built on open frameworks, so we called it OF. Um, from OF, it would I would get a list of uh, messages constantly uh, from the game engine. Um, a bunch of those messages would be called sound. Would be under would be filed under sounds. So of course, most of my messages here get filed under sounds. Route click. That's what we called tapping or clicking on the screen. And every time there's a click, it I I turn it into a bang trigger bang. Um, so the equivalent of me clicking here is in the game engine, clicking here. Now, if I open my sub patch here, you can actually see the sequence. This is the random sequence that got built when I opened the sound engine just now. So that's making a counter. 16 step counter that's going into this sequence. That sequence is then, uh, which can be randomized. We'll randomize it there. Why not? Here's a new one. Um, you can scroll through it quite fast here for fun. Um, that is then going into a set of tables that is applying it to a scale. So that's what this tab read modes is doing. It's taking all of this and these numbers that I'm getting back uh, from from uh, from tapping the screen, and it's applying it to a set of modes. Now those modes change depending on which world you're in. So if uh, if you're selecting a um, a uh, a level in Shoreline Shambles, 
It'll be one base, it'll be one, it'll be that set of notes, but applied to a single scale. If we go instead to Mountain Mayhem. The same uh, sequence will be applied to a different scale. Um, and similarly, uh, Villainsville. And as you can hear, every time I select one of these worlds, you're given a little preview of what the kind of sound library is going to be. So this one is kind of vaguely uh, beachfront themed, so all of the sounds that get selected, that get played. <laughs> it's randomized, I'd forgotten about that. So uh, every time you select it, uh, you get a random playback. You can actually end up playing it like an instrument because this is kind of semi-randomized but built from a set of finite samples. Um, little little kind of sonic preview of the sound library that's going to be played in those levels. Uh, so that's all kind of like little examples of, of little audio juice. Um, <laughs> oh boy, I'd forgotten about that. Um, yeah, so then there's actually a different... Anyway, so uh, there's a different uh, little preview that gets played as a little Easter egg. If you select the world first, go back to the main menu, and then press play, uh, uh, which is quite fun. So you can see all of that um, in this sound in this uh, world select system here. Uh, so in the world select, if we ch choose. I'm actually re just realizing now that everything in PD that I'm showing you is being played back at a different sample rate. Uh, so you'll, that's why the pitches are quite different. Um, doesn't matter, you get the idea. Uh, so that's my uh, uh, beachfront world. And that's our alien world at the end. Um, and then uh, uh, there is somewhere in here, um, there's the other ones. <laughs> uh, so yeah, a little theme for each one. Um, and then what ends up happening as well, when you select each of these different things, is it will change which mode is being applied across the entire playback of all of the audio. Um, now, within each world, uh, there are a bunch of little settings. So the amount of delay, um, the amount of uh, the volumes for each type of room. Um, and then, of course, there are different types of enemies in each one. Um, so, for example, this will be. Uh, uh, okay, well, who knows why that didn't work? Oh, maybe because I need to have that. Let's see if this works now. No. Well, for some reason, that didn't work. Um, how about my clouds? Also not working. It's been a little while since I've used this audio engine. Um, well, what we can do is uh, play another uh, level so you can see what this all sounds like when it comes together. Um, I don't know. Let's see. What do we want to play? Uh, Strumming on the old dino. Okay. So let's see what we can do here. Oh yeah, I remember this level. This one, you don't get any guns. Yeah, this one is pretty brutal, actually. It's just like a race against time. So in this world, the, uh, the standard rooms are uh, banjo samples played by my brother, which is quite fun. Um, yeah, I don't know how we managed to make this level. This level is bananas. The, um, this 
ice room uh, that shoots out snowflakes and freezes the enemies. Um, the samples for that are all from uh, uh, an ice skating rink where I did a recording session in Dundee once. Um, it's also a great little lucky frame in-joke. These beats are from our first game, uh, Hugs Love Beats. I think I'm gonna lose this. So there's a negative feedback thing there too, where if you lose a level, um, it goes silent, right? Because there's nothing more that can generate sound. So there's a nice kind of symmetry there that everything that makes sound is also what's keeping you alive. Um, or everything that is that adds to your sequencer, anyway, is what's keeping you alive. Um, and as soon as the sequencer is, uh, is brought down to zero, then you fail. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty, it's, yeah. It's a tough game, if I remember right. Um, <laughs> this is, there's a boss level uh, at the end of each one, um, which we can try. Let's give it a try. I'll probably lose this too because it's been too long. Oh yeah, this guy. You can build underground too. Pretty fun little. Okay, hold on, I know, I think I know what to do to play that one again. Here, let's go. Everything just blows apart into little pieces, which is pretty fun. But yeah, we took the controversial decision to uh, make it so that uh, the game, the level doesn't end when you beat the boss. You have to also beat everybody that goes well, comes afterwards. Which is maybe a bit I think we've done it. I don't want to add another loop to this, but... So you'll notice as well that, like, there's almost no strict repetition. Um, every step, everything that can get triggered, gets triggered alongside some other settings that will kind of add some variation. So if you listen to the bass drum here, for example, Banjo samples, um, the length is semi-randomized, and whether they're random, they're reversed or not is semi-randomized. So that can, can kind of creates a little bit of extra temp, a little bit of extra texture, a little bit less roboticness. Um, certainly, my influences for creating the sound library for this came a lot from um, early 2000s, late 90s hip hop, I think, uh, which is probably why. Um, there's so many Wu-Tang references in this. Uh, so the kind of aim was to try to make something that felt that had that kind of slightly unbalanced but coming together at just the right moments feel. Um, and with all the samples being as organic as possible. Um, there's certainly a lot of synthesis, uh, but there's also a lot of sample playback. Um, if you look into the uh, assets, um, Folder. Uh, oh, this whole this whole thing is on GitHub, by the way. I didn't even mention that. So you can download this whole um, audio engine. Um, there are loads and loads of sound files um, that are all played in different ways. Um, so, uh, of course, something's going wrong. But um, but you can kind of listen to them individually as well. 
Um, and, uh, oh my gosh, there we go. Uh, yeah, so there we go. We got our whole little like toy piano thing and then these kind of glitch sounds, um, which, uh, so that's also for that same world there. Um, the, that's a, uh, a charango being played also by my brother. Um, so there's a lot of kind of these uh, sort of, uh, yeah, textural kind of crunchy sounds. There's like I used sounds of sticks breaking, the ice skates on the ice rink, like I mentioned earlier, um, all of that. Uh, right, is there anything else I wanted to talk through on this? Um, let's see if any of these will work. Um, I can talk through that. Um, so this is a good example. So the, the gulls that come in sometimes, um, if uh, this is <laughs> this is obviously I didn't end up using because it's not connected to anything. Um, uh, but here are a few different um, sound systems that I used for those. Uh, this was actually a synth um, rather than a sample playback. Uh, but you can see that what happens is every time a gull gets killed by something, um, then it creates a set of random, it will choose, it will create a random number. That random number is then used um, to uh, pick a one of the tones within the mode that's currently chosen for the world. Um, so it will always stay in key uh, with everything else that's being played, but that key is constantly changing. Um, then the uh, it will then create a semi-randomized uh, um, it will thus create a semi-randomized uh, pitch, um, but that pitch will slide downwards into the So that's a nice way of kind of very simply creating um, a set of uh, different um, sounds out of a single sound that so they all sound pretty much the same, but it's musically in synced it's musically synced with everything else that will happen. Um, and that way the textural sounds that are created because that's not part of the sequence, right? That's happening outside of the sequence. A, a, a gun gets fired, that's part of the sequence. That bullet travels, it will at some point hit a bird and that will get played. So it won't be part of the, the core rhythmic structure of the game, um, but it's still important that that sound gets, uh, it, it's, it sounds nice as part of, of the whole the music that's getting created. Um, Similarly, so there are similar things for all of the um, for all of the uh, for all of the sounds, the enemies, and the weapons. Um, this is that freezer, that freezing snowflake gun that I mentioned earlier. So um, you can see in here that every time that gets fired, similarly, it will pick a random number, um, and that will create a. Uh, it will pick one of the um, sounds created that I recorded on that ice rink that time, um, and it will play it back. Now, I made this super crazy convoluted system here, um, which I probably should have done a bit better, uh, but this will create, will slightly pitch that sound as well and can choose whether it's being played forward or reversed. Um, so all of those things are just little kind of textural things that get, that are done to make it sound um, richer. Um, and they, they do add up. Um, there's also delays in here and reverbs. Um, those are all set per world, uh, but they're also synced to the tempo. So each level will have a different tempo. Um, and you can kind of hear that when you start it. Um, so uh, I don't know, let's go to a different world just for fun. Um, so we'll play this one. Just We'll just hear the beginning of it just for the tempo. back, choose a different one. Much faster. Um, well, what's also nice about that one thing that's interesting about the kind of generative music of Bad Hotel is that it all starts the same. So my kind of thinking with this was that um, I was once told uh, some crazy statistics. I don't won't remember them off the top of my head, but that uh, you know, games of chess will almost always, a game of chess will almost always start in one of a very few handfuls of ways. Um, they all start the same, but within a very, a, an astonishingly few number of moves, there are suddenly uh, 
millions of potential different ways that it can be played and then within a, a, an astonishingly short number of moves it's almost guaranteed that you're playing a game of chess that nobody in the world has ever played before and i loved that as an idea so it's similarly when you place a single room this this level starts exactly the same for everybody when you place an individual room it will start a sequence and that sequence will probably be pretty similar to something somebody else has started because the pitch of some of the sounds is dependent on where you place the room and so on and so forth uh, so chances are it will sound quite similar but within two or three or four decisions you're almost certainly playing a version uh, a musical version of, of this game the musical output is almost certainly completely different from anything anybody's ever played before um, which is kind of a beautiful thing and then it's dynamically changing from a game input as well uh, so let's just try it with this this level and see what this one's like this one looks like an interesting just kind of race to build and then a million enemies come up um, it was mainly sean and my job to design the levels uh, which drove jonathan completely bananas most of the time because we were making these completely strange levels that didn't really make any sense um, but let's see what the strategy should be Let's try this. The tempo, it's, like, it's funny, the kind of perceived tempo slows down as, as the branches get bigger, um, which is kind of a nice, we're already into a sort of like house, house tune here, watery house tune. And the length of the sequence will change as soon as I drop this room. Like that. Oh no, I'm losing all my rooms! Quick, quick, quick! Oh boy. Boy, I went on a journey with that one. Try again. So these rooms are the ones that are making me money, so I should probably just pack them in and then add some guns in. Ooh, there's a weird glitch going on there. Now, of course, if one of these birds takes out the base of one of my branches, then I lose everything that it's attached to, so it's pretty brutal. That is a lot of enemies. I don't know what the hell you're thinking. Okay. Oh god. Oh god. What, what that is all right well if anybody else can beat not in the pool uh they're welcome to destroy me on steam um okay so yeah that's that's uh that's bad hotel the audio system um and what i made uh to make a generative musical system um there's lots of other stories I could tell about this game in terms of the reception and, and how it went and the sales and, and what it was like from an indie game company standpoint. Um, some of those videos are already online, actually, from other talks I've given, so I might just link to those. But um, otherwise, I hope that was an interesting uh, insight into the, um, the actual audio system. Uh, like I say, this is all on my GitHub, so I'll post that link in the comments of this video um, or in the video uh, description um and i hope you enjoyed this uh let me know if you have any questions i'd be happy to address them best i can thanks for watching <laughs>